Hello, my name is Amanda McKinnon, and this is vlog number four, I think. Correction, it is vlog number five, and the first thing we're going to talk about is chapter five, the Internet of Inhumane Things. So it kind of talks about how data is connected to everything nowadays and like your personal information when you fill out that stuff that collects data and when you keep putting in more of your personal information that's more and more data that your phone is collecting about you and if companies can get that data all of your personal information and like like your birthday I had to put my social security number in my phone before your address like family members, their address, like all that is very important stuff that you don't want going out there. So if you do have that going out there, that is a huge problem and it needs a way to be prevented. We also learned that the IOTs embed sensors into every object, which connects everything virtually, which is kind of going back to the whole data thing. Like it will sense when there's something new and it will collect that data and put it out there once we don't have it anymore. There's a certain quote from this chapter that really stood out to me and it was the outcome of global deployment of the IOT could be heaven or hell, but either way, the compass for this journey is being collaborated right now, which means we really don't have a choice that this is gonna happen because it is we and we don't know how it's gonna go it's just something that we're just waiting for and we're gonna wait and see the outcome whether it's heaven or hell and that's gonna determine a lot about the future the book also says just imagine a world and half of this stuff is already happening like it's known one of them is your connected car communicates all of its data in real time teslas any car like apple play um, your payments are linked on your smart device with cash, wallets, and credit cards. Wallet app, Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal, banking apps. Um, your doctor can easily find out how little you have gotten off the chair this week. Tracks everything, but my doctor doesn't know, but I know. Which is, I guess, a little bit different, but... And in chapter six we discuss the magic manic and toxic that's the chapter title but it's basically talking about how, what technology has brought to us in different ways some magic moments of technology getting a smartphone like the iphone that fits in your pocket touchscreen it's amazing um the music industry having billions of different songs on your phone just on the tip of your fingers just tap you can listen to any song when you get too much of this and have all of this like power magic per se it becomes an obsession and it starts to take over your life and you become extremely addicted like people are their phones i'm guilty of that i will just be sitting there i can even sit like in silence i'm like i need some oh, i need some background noise if people have noticed, our emotions are easily manipulated through our phone. Like, one person can send a text saying, like, something that can be changed if the person receiving it reads it in their perspective, per se. Like, they can get emotional about that. Like, do you want to hang out? And they just say, sure. Like, I would say, sure. And then, like, read that as, sure. Oh, they obviously don't want to hang out with me. So that's very manipulative through the phone. <laughs> the manic thing, people use their phone like they breathe. If you take that away from them, some people cannot function without it. And that is just so unhealthy for our society and kind of depressing per se, because people use, like I'll go to a restaurant and I won't, if I see an old, peop old people there, they're not using their phone, they're just talking to each other, having great conversations. But then if you look from someone from like, let's see, the, like early 30s to like 11 year olds, they're on their phones, not socializing, just looking down, scrolling. They could honestly be texting each other, which is a little stupid, but 
I, I have done that before. It's not a great feeling once you realize what you're doing, but it's just something that's available now and we use. Social media accounts ruin the world with all of this hate, fake news, and all they're doing is making money from it and making people more depressed, more anxious, more sensitive to everything in the world. Like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. It's just a place where people go to hurt other people's feelings, cancel people, try to make themselves look good, edit themselves. It's just a toxic place that sadly to say we're all a part of, but it's just something that once again, we're just dealing with. When the first phone was created, I don't think people thought one day this thing will be smarter than me. But now my phone knows so much more than me. Like, I don't know if I would have passed high school without technology. So you can look up things. You don't have to go to the library. You can just look up articles, look up summaries, look up all this. Like, without it, I don't know where we'd be. This week's, the past two weeks' readings, they were okay. Like, the chapters were okay. I didn't really get to cover the articles in this video because personally I didn't fully understand what they were getting at but I still read them I still understood them I just wasn't a fan of them the chapters make a lot more sense to me I enjoy the chapters more even though once again they are very repetitive but overall piece of week I do miss watching the videos even though it is time consuming I did enjoy the social dilemma a lot and that's all. That's it for now. See y'all in two weeks.